Imagine a math problem so challenging it stumped the ancient Egyptians, the Greeks and even Fibonacci. The cubic equation was the ultimate puzzle, cracked by Del Ferro and later published by Cardano in the 16th century. Let's visualize the groundbreaking solution that had puzzled mathematicians for millennia. We start by looking at something called the depressed cubic equation. Here, both m and n are constants. This is called the depressed cubic equation since we have an x cubed term but no x squared terms. Now, since we're dealing with something cubed, it's only natural to visualize this problem using volumes. So, x cubed can be visualized as the volume of a cube with side lengths equal to x. m times x can be visualized as the volume of a prism with the height of x and the bottom area equal to m. According to the equation, the volume of the yellow cube plus the blue prism should equal m. Now, to calculate the volume, we can either take x cubed plus mx, which basically is the equation we started with, or we can try to find another expression for calculating the same volume. Just like we completed the square for the quadratic formula, we'll up the dimensions and try to complete a cube. But that's not an easy task to accomplish. Therefore, we need to pick our dimensions precisely so that everything works. For the blue prism, the height is x and the bottom area m. This means that the side lengths can be whatever as long as the product equals m. Let's call these side lengths t and u and set some criteria for the blue shape. Number one, t times u is equal to m, since that's the bottom area. Number two, when we split the blue prism into three equal pieces and slap them onto the yellow cube, we should get an almost complete cube like this. Doing this, we notice that t is equal to x plus u over 3. To calculate the volume of the shape, we can take the volume of the entire cube, which equals t cubed, and then subtract the empty spot on top, which basically is u over 3 cubed. This equation will give us the volume of the yellow and blue shape, exactly like our initial equation. The difference is that we now have two unknowns and two equations which will let us solve for t, u, and finally for x. Therefore, we can use this to derive a general formula. We start by writing out the u over 3 cubed term and multiply by 27 on both sides to eliminate the denominator. Since we have two unknowns and two equations for t and u, we can for example rewrite this expression in terms of t. Since t times u is equal to the constant m, u is equal to m over t. We can therefore make a substitution for u. Now, we can write out the m over t cubed term and multiply by t cubed on both sides to eliminate the denominator. Then, we can move the 27n times t cubed term to the left side. This will leave us with a 6 degree polynomial. Now, for some of you, this might seem as a tougher challenge than what we started with, but if we just set a k equal to t cubed and make a substitution for t cubed, we will actually get a second degree polynomial in terms of k. We can therefore solve for k by using the quadratic formula, which we looked at in the previous video. Here, 27 will be the a, negative 27n is the b, and negative m cubed is c. Plugging the values into the formula will give us this solution. What we can do now is to simplify the expression as much as possible. We start by factoring out 9 in the square root term and rewrite the expression. Then we can divide both the numerator and denominator by 3 to simplify further. Now, instead of having everything as one fraction, we split them into two and simplify the first fraction. For the second fraction, we realize that 18 can be rewritten as the square root of 324. Since there's a square root term in both the numerator and denominator, we can rewrite it as one square root term with the fraction inside. The fraction inside can then be split into two and simplified. This will give us a solution for k. Since we know that k equals t cubed, t has to equal the cube root of k. We can now solve for t, and since u equals m over t, we can solve for it as well. 
From earlier, we also have that t equals x plus u over 3. Therefore, x has to equal t minus u over 3. Solving for x using the equation will give us this general formula for solving depressed cubic equations. So, if we can take a general cubic equation and somehow turn it into a depressed one, we should be able to solve for x. To make the process easier to understand, we can start by imagining everything on the left side as a function f and plot it out. Our equation is essentially just asking us when the function f is equal to 0. Now, if we translate the entire function by b over 3a, we'll end up with a depressed cubic function, which we can solve by using our formula. Wait, what? Why is that? Well, by plotting out various depressed cubic functions, we realize that the inflection point always lands at x equals 0. This is no coincidence. We find the inflection point by taking the double derivative of a function and set it equal to 0. For a general cubic function, the inflection point can therefore be found at x equals negative b over 3a. Notice that the only way we can get an inflection point at x equals 0 is if the b term is equal to 0 as well. Therefore, the entire x squared term will be eliminated and the function will be depressed. So, we know that the graph is just a bunch of points following a function. The idea is that we take all the points on the graph and push them by b over 3a. As you can see, both graphs have the same shape, but we have now shifted the inflection point to x equals 0. We have now gone from a general cubic function to a depressed one. That means that we practically can take any cubic equation, translate it by b over 3a so that we get a depressed cubic. We can then use the formula from earlier to solve for when the depressed cubic equation is equal to 0 and translate the solution back by negative b over 3a to get a solution. Let's look at a quick example. We translate the entire equation by b over 3a, which basically is 3, in order to get a depressed cubic equation. This equation can be solved by using the formula from earlier. Here, we only get one solution, which is x equals 2. Now, in order to get the solution for our original equation, we just have to undo the operation where we translated the equation by 3. So, if we translate the solution by negative 3, we will get the solution we were looking for, namely, x equals negative 1.